In this next lesson, we're going to take a look at the sales invoicing process with MX Story. When doing uh, sales invoicing, uh, there's a couple different uh, methods to accomplish that. Just like uh, for the delivery creation, there was three methods to generate sales invoices. There are also three methods. The first method we're going to take a look at is a push method generating the sales invoice from our validated delivery record. So if I come under my sales menu and go to deliveries then to deliveries, we're going to choose our full entry transaction. Then in here we go ahead and grab our delivery and over on the right hand side we have our invoice button. Now it's important to note that this invoice button is not going to be active if the delivery hasn't been validated yet. Okay, so one way of telling if the delivery has been validated is you can come down here at the bottom of the delivery and see this posted flag, this posted box being checked. So when generating the invoice I can just click on the invoice button choose your full entry invoice transaction and that in part will tunnel us over to the invoice record so in this case this is invoice 001 that has been generated the second method of uh, generating a sales invoice is a pool method so to generate the invoice that way, we come under our sales, then to invoices and invoices. Once again, we're going to choose the full entry invoice. I'm going to come over and click on the new button. Specify our sales site. specify our invoice type then once we specify that we're going to come over and click on this delivery selection tray and this is going to give us a register of our validated deliveries that haven't been invoiced for yet so we can go ahead and click and that in part will bring over all our particulars from the delivery record. Here on the lines tab there's all your product information, it's got your customer PO, and we can come over here and click on create and that'll go ahead and assign for us an invoice number. Now the third way of generating an invoice is through a batch routine. So also under this invoices subdirectory we have this delivery auto invoicing. It's important to note on this delivery auto invoicing and it's popular for many clients to set this up as a nightly batch routine. So for instance you could set up this uh, function to execute you know every evening after a, you know say at 11 o'clock you know after hours to go ahead and generate all the invoicing documents for all the uh, deliveries that have been validated that day. So in here I'm going to go ahead and specify my company, specify my selling site. Here is the date that are going to appear on all the invoice records that are created. My invoice type. I have a delivery date range cutoff that I can set. Here in this periodicity section here um, this is for your inv uh, certain customers may have a and this is on the customer master file you can set them up with a special billing frequency so maybe they only get one invoice per day for all the shipments that have went out for that day maybe they only get an invoice on a weekly basis once every 10 days every two weeks or once a month okay by default, you know you're going to get one invoice for each delivery. 
and that's the way we're going to run it in this case with these flags not being checked. We can filter on a range of customer numbers if we were so inclined or a range of delivery records. If we wanted to go ahead and print out our invoicing documentation when we ran this process, I could go ahead and put a check in that invoicing box. This S-Bond FAC is our invoice report. Then I could specify the printer destination over here that I wanted to output the forms to. In this case, we're not going to print out the documentation, so I'm going to uncheck that. So we're going to come over here and click on OK. And I've got no shipment processed here. We may have already generated all the invoices for those deliveries for the day. Let's try to do one more quick pass through this delivery auto invoicing. I think the one uh, delivery that was still outstanding had a delivery date of the 10th. So that's with that cutoff date of the 7th. That's why I was being excluded. So let me go ahead and set these parameters accordingly here. Come back over here and click on OK. It'll go through and run the process once again, and this time, there it is. We got invoice number four that's been created, uh, tied out to those shipment records there. Okay, so again, that's the third method that you can run in batch, a uh, very popular way to go about it. So now, let's take a closer look at these invoices. So again, under sales invoices, invoices, we'll choose our full entry invoice. So in here, you got your selling site detailed, your, in, uh, your invoice number, you got a type indicator here indicating if it's a regular invoice versus a credit memo, your customer PO is going to show up in this reference field, you got the date of the invoice, the currency, if you do anything by way of intercompany billings, there's a uh, flag right there that can be set. There's your customer's account number. Down here on the management tab, we have the sold to on the customer's account. We got the account number of the business partner that's going to be paying this invoice. We got the grouping customer code associated with this customer. Here's your delivery address. We have a linkage back to the uh, shipment record that this invoice corresponds to. Down here in the stock section, this gives you some information pertaining to where the uh, respective delivery was shipped out of. Your INCO term information. Over here on the right hand side, if you do any project accounting or project tracking, uh, this invoice can be associated with a particular project. We got a primary and a secondary sales rep indicator. We got your taxing information here. Down here in the status field here, you have a status field telling you if the invoice has been printed out yet or if it's been posted. Here on the invoicing tab, you'll have information relative regarding the currency. Um, if, the current, if you're billing in a foreign denomination, you'll have information relative to the exchange rate on the invoice. Here in the payment block, if you do anything by way of um, selling your receivables to a, a third-party financial institution at a discounted rate, that factor can be set on the invoice. We got our AR control account. You can have multiple AR accounts in X3 depending upon what your bookkeeping needs are. You got your due date start, the payment terms how long you're giving the customer to pay the bill. If you grant the customer an early payment discount, that can be set here. If you wanted your billings to be apportioned over a certain number of fiscal periods, a benefit period range can be set up for that purpose. We have comment fields here. So these are you know, different types of miscellaneous comments that you'd want presented on the invoice. 
Here in our analytical section, we have our different uh, dimension types that we can set. So if we wanted this sale to be registered, you know, against a particular market segment or again against a particular project or a particular cost center, those can all be detailed here on the invoice tab. You'll notice also here when we get to the lines tab, there's dimensions on the line that can also be set. Over here in the invoicing elements section, these are for all your below the line charges, additional freight fees, um, additional you know packaging fees or insurance fees. Next over here on our lines tab, this is all the product uh, information on the sale, all your uh, product IDs, descriptions, quantities, pricing informations, any pricing premium or discounts on the line here are captured. You got per unit cost and margin factors, taxing information on the line can all be captured herein. Then over here on our valuation tab we kind of have a summary information regarding if there's any taxes at play, summary of all your invoicing elements and the total invoice value. So at this point, if we want to go ahead and print out the invoice, I can come over to my printer icon and come to record. And there's a couple different invoicing reports that we can choose from. Let me go ahead and choose this portrait, for, portrait version here, this S Bonfac P. And I'll come over and click on my print button on the right hand side and pull it up to preview. So here's our invoice report your invoice number, the information associated order and shipments numbers associated with the sale, all your product information, and the valuation summary. You'll notice here we have this temporary watermark on the invoice and what that's in relationship to, if I go ahead and close this up, um, that's in relationship to the fact that this invoice hasn't been posted yet. Okay, so um, there's a couple different ways by which we can post our items. One way to do it, uh, we can come over here and click on this post button. And this will go ahead and po post the invoice for us. Uh, updating our AR sub ledger and also updating our general ledger with all the respective AR and sales, you know, freight charges and so forth. Now a second way by which we can do our validation is also under this invoice directory here we have uh, the invoice validation and this is one of those processes um, you know that you can validate your invoices in batch as opposed to a one-off basis. So in here I can come in and say okay validate all invoices for all companies across all uh, financial sites, invoices generated by all users, all types of invoices, in other words inclusive of both invoices and credit memos. If I want this validation to be exclusive to invoices generated on a particular day, I can go ahead and set that range. Okay. Then I can come over here, click on OK, and this should run through my posting routine. And this in part will go ahead and turn out a log file for me, showing me all the invoice records that have been uh, validated. Next here, let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, inquiries associated with our sales invoicing that might be of help to you. Down uh, under our sales block in the inquiries section, we have in the invoices group here, we have a variety of different inquiries. We can run the list of invoicing showing you header level information on the invoices, the invoice lines showing you the product details of the billings. We got different types of um, graphs that we can run by period, by sales rep, invoice hit list. For this exercise, let's go ahead and take a look at the invoices by period. We're going to come in here. We can specify our company code, specify our selling site. Uh, we're not going to filter on any particular customer or invoice date range. We'll include both invoices and credits in this posted and non-posted activity. 
invoices. In this case, let's just only look at it, product invoices generated through the sales module. We'll exclude kind of miscellaneous billings done through the APAR module. Down in the periodicity section, uh, we have a range here. You know, we could take this back. In this case, over, you know, let's call it four months. You can see the different options that you have in there. Uh, over on the right hand side here, we're going to go ahead and click on this tax excluded uh, button. And this will be giving our summary of the sales without the tax. Okay. So here we got our breakout over the last four months. If we want to see a finer level of detail, if we want to see, say, like a weekly breakout, we can change that, then come over here and click on search. Okay. It'll give you, you know, the week by week, and we could do it finer yet. We can do a, a day range here. And the search that's going to get pretty fine level of detail there. It's coming a little bit more eligible there, but you can tunnel on in and get uh, kind of a good view on that. Okay. So that is some of the inquiries that we have uh, regarding the invoices. Let's also take a quick look at some of the uh, sales reports that we have in the system. So I can go ahead and close out of here. And close page here. And let's come down under our printouts. Then we'll come into our sales section. So in here we have external you know, business, uh, documents that we'd send to our business partners. We have internal documents for analysis. We got sales price list information, different analytical reports, and we have a variety of different list reports here. Let's go ahead and come into the list reports section. Now the list report here that are in relationship to the sales invoicing is going to be these three reports right here. We got a couple different list of invoices of sales invoices. Um, for this exercise here, let's take a look at the detail list of sales invoices. So I could go ahead and click on that. And then here, go ahead and specify your company code. You specify on line number four the date range over which you want the report to be executed. And we'll come over here and click on print. And that in part is going to go ahead and generate this crystal report for us. And you can kind of see the details on here. You got summarized by site. You got a register of all your different invoices here. And you'll notice uh, when we ran this report, we didn't uh, filter out our pro forma invoices. See the PRF? That was also included in here. But again, we can run the report to exclude the pro formas to only give us our standard commercial invoices. Okay, but you can get the idea. Uh, from what we're seeing here. So again, uh, in your testing, go ahead and run all those reports. And again, these are crystal reports, so they can be modified, uh, you know, to meet the specific reporting needs of your organization. Okay, so that is it for the sales invoicing section. Uh, in our next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at kind of, I guess, the reverse sales process, uh, starting with looking at uh, how to process customer returns into the system.